This is Good Morning Mumbai, and you're with Rishi K. Radio One. I'm very pleased to welcome. Uh, the Salman Rushdie. How are you, Salman? <laughs> yes, that's me. All others are imitations. <laughs> <laughs> this is a homecoming. I mean, Cathedral and John Connon School, yep. Bombay City. Um, how much does it change each time you come back? You know, it's not it's not the city that I grew up in anymore. But I mean, that's interesting. All cities, all cities change and grow. You know, and I've I've tried to stay in touch. I mean, I'm still, I guess, I'm still really a South Bombay boy. You know, that's the area that I know best. But I'm kind of get, getting to find out about other parts of the city a little bit. Yeah, well, we've got to get you low down and dirty and uh, take you to Andheri and, uh, you know, those parts. I have, be- <laughs> I have been to Andheri. And I am very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> the school, uh, you yeah. know, Alma Mater, do they call you uh, for important functions and get you up on stage and make speeches and things like that? I've, done, I've visited a couple of times, actually. I'm, but, but I haven't, not like that, but I've just been uh, in fact, I was here in the city with my with my two sons a couple of years ago, and and they wanted to see where their father went to school. So, um, so I took them on the Salman tour. <laughs> <laughs> and the evil was it Emil Zagalo, the the professor professori who uh, yes. pulls out hair from the child's scalp. Yes, yes, he was a mixture of about there were about two or three teachers in my day who were real sadists. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I just put them all into one. <laughs> <laughs> Life is exciting as a writer. You can just take, twist, contort. <laughs> you know, it's, it's dangerous hanging around with the writer because uh, literature is a great revenge. Yeah. Now, the, uh, the professori, who was he actually in, in the cathedral school? I mean, the one who came closest to, uh, to this one. What is his name? Are you in a position to reveal? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I should let him rest in peace. Really. <laughs> Wherever he is, I don't know if he He's dead or alive, but yeah. um, but you know it was. I mean, interestingly, they had a kind of reunion year, um, and and I was in touch with a lot of the people via email. But I mean, I wasn't able to come. But you know, everybody's still behaving exactly as they used to behave when we were twelve years old. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to listen to some music. This is all I want to do is make love to you by heart. We're giving away five autograph books of a Midnight's Children, which is the Booker of Bookers. Here's the question: There is a uh, an Irish rocker. Whom Salman Rushdie collaborated with. What is his name? It's one space, the name of that Irish rocker. Come on, I can't give you a bigger hint than uh, he's part of the biggest rock and roll band in the world. One space, his name and your name. Type that and send it to 53650 or it's twitter.com slash H-R-I-S-H-I-K-A-Y. Spectacular, you guys are straight off the block. Hard. All I want to do is make love to you. I asked uh, about that Irish rocker who's uh, a buddy of Salman Rushdie's and straight off the block. Listen, I know a lot of you have SMSed in, uh, but we're only giving away five autographed copies. Uh, so, sorry. So, let me pick just the first two guys or ladies and then we'll come back and give you another question so that two more of you can win and then maybe a final one. So, Rohit, your last four digits are 7909. Congratulations. And Ruta, your last four digits are 7897. You're absolutely correct. It is Bono. Here we are. With Salman Rushdie. This is Good Morning Mumbai, and you're with Rishi K. Radio One. Bono and you, abiding friendship. Yeah, we've known each other a long time now. And collaborating on uh, The Ground Beneath Her Feet, which is actually, a, a, you know, your piece of work, uh, which was adapted uh, adapted for the Million Dollar Hotel soundtrack. Talk about that. Well, I just sent him the book to read when it came out. In fact, before it came out, because I wanted him to tell me if I made any stupid mistakes, you know. Um, and he just was, you know, it's a book in which there's an imaginary songwriter and, the, and so there's some lyrics of imaginary songs in it. And there's one which is actually called The Ground Beneath Her Feet. And he liked the lyrics and set them to music and it became a real song, which is kind of amazing to cross over from the world of fiction into reality. So I then had the enjoyable experience of going to listen to the band. It was, I think, the Elevation Tour when they were actually playing the song, you know, as part of the set. That's, that's kind of a one-off experience. And, and there have been moments on stage in the Zoo TV tour where he's actually called out to Salman Rushdie. That no, I went on quite stage. Surreal. I went on stage. <laughs> Zuropa it was, not Zoo TV. Zuropa, Zuropa yeah, yeah. I went mm. on stage with them in, in Wembley Stadium with only 85,000 people. Only. <laughs> <laughs> sort of bigger than most book readings. <laughs> 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 Subtlety, thy name is Salman. <laughs> yeah, but you know, but nice dinners in in Belfast. Where does he live? Well, he, you know, he. I think he has more than one house. I'm sure. <laughs> but he does spend a lot of his life in mm. Dublin. Not, don't say Belfast. You kill okay. you. Yeah, correct. That's yeah. Northern Ireland. Um, <laughs> but but no, he has. They live in Dublin, and they have a place in New York as well. You know, I, I think two. I mean, his daughters are at university in New York, so I think they'll be spending quite a lot of time there. And uh, any uh, memorable dinners where he's invited some other musicians? We're dying to know. You know, well, Van Morrison. You know. I mean, I, he, he was. He said when, I, when he found out that I was always been a big fan of Van Morrison, and I, and he found out that I'd never met him. 
and, and he said that you know you have to meet him. So he arranged a dinner. The trouble with dinners at Bono's house is it starts out being a dinner for four people, it ends up being dinner for forty people. You know, so can you imagine what his wife must be complaining about? Well, that's, <laughs> you're you know, saying that. I think she probably has some help. You know, um, but I mean, it was very, I mean, it was great meeting Van Morrison. But you know, he is he's a grump. <laughs> 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 but I did end up dancing with him. Mm. Yes, we were in Bono's living like room. Like the waltz. <laughs> no, it's more like the pogo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, on that note, uh, it's an auspicious note to play some Van Morrison. This is Brown, Brown Eyed Girl. In conversation with Salman Rushdie, there will be a, a one more contest question up ahead. Don't go anywhere. This is Good Morning Mumbai and you're with Rishi K. Radio 1. Well, I tell you this, <laughs> there are some very, very interesting reactions on Twitter. Ask him why no more stories about his beloved Mumbai, says uh, Sanjay Lazar. I want to know about his marriage, uh, his life. We always hear about his new love affair, says Ashish Kumar Tandon. <laughs> Van Morrison on the morning show, Jitain Bhagat says. See what Salman Rushdie can do to your show, Rishi. <laughs> Keep him coming. you got to interview Salman. He's as witty as, in, as he is in his books. And that one's a sitter. It's Bono. Kyle DeCosta. Thank you. I mean, there's so many of them. All you guys here. Yeah, your, your love life has always been at the center of things, hasn't it? There's How's that doing, by the way? I think it's fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often you're put in, you're caught on the wrong foot, are you? <laughs> no, but I also know how to not answer questions. How to not answer questions? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know, I, I was saying this to you off the mic. Uh, mm. As somebody in in the in the radio business and in the voiceover business, one always tends to look at uh, voiceovers in cinema a little critically. I mean, you're no stranger to voiceovers. You know, you've done audiobooks and the, yes. and things like that. In Midnight's Children, the Deepa Mehta film, uh, you are the central narrative person. How did you get conned into doing that? Well, you know, one of the rules I discovered really worked in this film was that you do everything that Deepa Mehta says. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> basically the way to enjoy life more. And no, it was her idea, and it was quite a late idea, because actually we didn't really think initially that there would even be a narration. You know, we thought we'd just make the film and cut it and show it. But once we looked at the cut, it was clear that it needed something to hold it together. And so I wrote that, and then... She tried out a couple of actors and decided that she wanted me to do it instead. So, so I had a go, and I mean, fortunately, it, I think it worked out. I mean, I was reserving the right to fire myself if it was too embarrassing, but I guess it's, <laughs> you know, I think it's okay. And you actually sing or, or or hum at one particular point. I have to. There's a moment of the. I think it's the cathedral school song actually that uh, mm. they they made me sing like a couple of lines of it. I don't. I believe me, I'm not a singer. <laughs> but you were an advertising copywriter. We were just discussing the commercials, and obviously that's censored in between our, our uh, bits of chat. Mm. Does that uh, does that still come back to to haunt you? Do you regret Every, it, or you no, think no, that I was mean, necessary for evolution? No, actually, it's how it was. It's what allowed me to write Midnight Store, and you know, because those days I had absolutely no money, and uh, I managed to. I mean, it was, advertising was different then. And I managed to get a part time job, so I was working like two days a week, three mm. days a week sometimes, and so it meant I had four sometimes five days a week at home to write you know and and uh and that's how the book got written. And basically, when it, when, it, when I finished writing it, I was able to give up the job in advertising. And that felt great. <laughs> <laughs> totally Same. unrelated. And I have this tendency of jumping from yeah, A to Z. Right. Uh, you, you, you decline tea and coffee here. What do you eat? I mean, what's your favorite type of food? Are you like an Indian person or a pasta yeah. person? Or what are no, you? I hardly eat anything, which is why I'm so slim. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Salma. <laughs> <laughs> But geez, you're back in your hometown, the yes. country of your birth. What yes. is it that you, you go into the restaurants and at least in the hotel rooms and order? Yeah. No, I mean, I you know, I was I went out to dinner last night and had a very nice meal. But it's a, uh, I mean, I'm you know, I I eat a lot of uh, of of Indian food even nowadays. In, I mean, New York always used to be a bad place for Desi Khanna because it was like in that city of a million restaurants that it was the one cuisine that was really underrepresented. Mm. You know, but that's changed now, mm. fortunately. So there are places to go. More Salman Rushdie. And now this is Ground Beneath Her Feet from the Million Dollar Hotel soundtrack. This is that U2 song we just talked about and it's part of our contest question. Here we go. 906, it's Salman Rushdie in the house. That is the ground beneath her feet, uh, which um, uh, we were just talking about a while ago. Okay, Salman Rushdie is here and uh, we, we've talked about his copywriting. We've talked about his, uh, his voiceovers. Now, the, the music connection all over again. You've just been uh, to an award ceremony of, of great importance. Talk about that. Tell yeah, well, the listeners about that. You know, in, in, in the United States, they've started uh, an award through the writing organization, Penn, uh, International Pen, which I'm a member of. 
to give lifetime achievement awards for songwriting. You know, oh. and of course, this is a almost like a golden age of songwriting. And we had, I mean, just the jury was extraordinary. The jury included people like, you know, Paul Simon, Elvis Costello, and for some reason, me. And we gave a joint award. And this is the first time it, we're going to give two awards every two years. That's the idea. Oh. And this first two was incredible. I mean, Chuck Berry and Leonard Cohen, I mean, some legendary figures, and they both showed up. And then because they showed up, other people showed up, like Paul Simon Elvis Costello came, and then Keith Richards came just to applaud from the audience. And uh, there's this one of the craziest photographs I've ever been in, which, which is me surrounded by all these people. Um, and it was, I think they were, everybody was so impressed to be there with everybody else that everyone behaved very well. <laughs> <laughs> and with Keith Richards, that has got to be, you know, you know a one-off. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but listen, you you have you've always had friends from the musical world. I yes. mean, the Beatles is is Paul a buddy? I the late him. George Harrison? No, I did. I met I've met them both. I, mean, I wouldn't say they're buddies. I mean, I the friends I have. Uh, I mean, I do have a lot of friends. Uh, I mean, Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits is a quite a good friend of mine, and mm -hmm. and uh, who was a writer himself is still a music writer, but yeah. uh, you know, he used to but, be a journalist, I believe. Yeah, but for mm -hmm. me, I mean, Lou Reed. You know, I mean, when I was a kid, wow. when I was a student at university and listening to the Velvet Underground and so on, and, and thinking of them as you know God, the idea that I would ever have like Lou Reed's phone number was <laughs> impossible to imagine. You know. Oh. So sometimes it's very impressive to get uh, to have had the opportunity to get to know these folks. And obviously your books again influenced uh, there. I mean, uh, in uh, in um, there is a character. Is it is it in the in the ground beneath her feet, which is very close to John Lennon? Well, it was well something happens to him, which is like yeah. the, which I mean he gets I mean, he gets murdered he gets murdered in a similar way to John Lennon. Yes, yeah, so I mean that novel plays all kinds of games with the real history of rock and roll and kind of messes around with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you like doing that a bit, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and you studied history in college. One yes. would always think Salman Rushdie, author, studies literature, such a cliched thing, but then... Uh, Never history. studied literature at all. Mm. I mean, I read a lot of books, but I, no, I've always thought it was very important that I studied history because it's been very influential on me in the kind of books I write. I mean, mm. after all, Midnight Children, That's right. you know, is a book with, in which... Uh, uh, this, the life of this boy is set against the history of the newborn country. You know? mm. So, so it's always been for me a good way into a story to look at the historical setting. Mm -hmm. We're going to play some Beatles now. Here comes the song. Don't go anywhere. The Beatles, actually a song way close to the late George Harrison's heart. Here comes the sun. It's 9.16 in the morning. Salman Rushdie is here with me. Logical question, considering, uh, you know, you're involved with the screenplay also of the movie Midnight's Children. Mm -hmm. Why should somebody who's listening right now go on the first and watch Midnight's Children? Well, I mean, I hope because it's a really good story, you know. I mean, it's a, a story about a boy growing up, sort of coming-of-age story in a way, but it's a coming-of-age story of a very interesting generation, which is the generation immediately following the independence of India, which is sort of my generation, I guess. But one of the things I've been really interested in in the first audiences that have been watching it, including here, including in, 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 in Delhi a few days ago, is how many people said to me afterwards that it didn't feel like a period movie, that it felt kind of very contemporary and relevant, you know, now. I think a lot of that has to do with the performances. I think you know, we're lucky in our cast. It's an incredible cast. Um, the uh, you know, South Indian actor Siddharth and Shriya Saran are both kind of really extraordinary in it. And Shahana Goswami. She's so staggeringly beautiful, isn't she? Shriya? There is that. Oh. There is that. When the film came out in America, uh, in Canada, people coming out of the cinema, everybody was saying, who's that girl? <laughs> <laughs> and so I think, you know, she does a great job. And Shahana Goswami, who plays Salim's mother, and really has to, in some ways, hold the first half of the film together. Um, she's really brilliant, I think, in it. Uh, it's a beautiful and deep portrayal. And, uh, you know, all these other, I mean, wonderful actors. Rahul Bose, my old friend, plays the Pakistani general Zulfikar. And, I mean, it's just, you couldn't imagine it being better done. Speaking of which, also, Seema Biswas, who plays the Ayah Mary, who is the one who commits this crime, you know, of swapping these two babies at birth. Um, I mean, Seema Biswas is a great actress, but I think I've never seen her give such a great performance. So, you know, there's all that to enjoy. Uh, who's your favorite character other than Salim Sinai in the in the book? I know it's a, it's a hugely difficult question to answer. I mean, all your children, yeah. these characters. Well, I mean, I think one of the things that emerges in the film is his alter ego, you know, the baby with whom he swapped at midnight, mm. Shiva, who grows up having this very harsh life and then becomes a war hero and so on and so on. Is a kind of tragic hero, sort of mm. dark character. Um, I've always liked him as a character, but actually the way in which he's incarnated by Siddharth, I mean, he's just magnetic on screen. So, mm. so that's... Uh, 
that I would say that, but also one of the things that's great about the movie, I think, is how many strong parts for women there are in it. You know, I mean, the starting with Shabana Azmi as the grandmother, going through Seema Biswas, Shahana Goswami, Shriya Saran, um, Sarita Chaudhary. You know, there's really a lot of major roles for women, and that feels very pleasurable. More conversation with Salman Rushdie. Okay, he has another context question. We've given away two books. Uh, there are three more to be given out. This time around, two more going out right now. What is Salman Rushdie's alias? There was a time that he wrote uh, under another name. One space, that name, and his, and your name, whoever you are who's SMSing in, send it to 53650. One space, his alias, and your name in 53650. Or you could uh, tweet, twitter.com slash hrishiky. Don't go anywhere.